Tonight we're going to talk about economic systems, and you might have noticed a lot of isms at the end of each of these systems. Um, and it is important to distinguish that these systems are different from political systems. So some countries today might have uh, one type of economy, but a different type of government. So for example, the United States is capitalist, but we have a democratic government. Um, and so those different combinations explain why countries are different today. The other thing to note is that the systems we're about to go through uh, are these, we're describing the theories and the ideas behind these systems, not how they are put into practice. Okay, so some of these systems and their theories are very difficult to put into practice as they were designed. Uh, and so when you look at countries today, they look a little bit different and have their own way of doing things. Socialism. So in no particular order, since really socialism is a less extreme version of communism and Marxism. We'll start with that. Uh, and socialism rejects capitalism and in general rejects private ownership of property and uh, private ownership of the means of production. So instead you would have collective ownership of property and collective ownership of the means of production. Property and the means of production should be collectively owned. It's a core principle is sharing. Everything is produced by an industry is because people work together and everyone puts in and therefore everyone gets out and is deserving of an equal share. Think social, right? People socializing and working together with one another. In socialism, the economy is planned centrally, so by a government, and is supposed to work equally for all. In practice today, uh, socialist countries oftentimes have private ownership of land, have private ownership of production, but those industries that are considered to be essential or a right of mankind, like education, healthcare, uh, postal system, etc., that everyone deserves, those are socialized and the government owns them and therefore people pay taxes and they don't have to pay when they go to the doctor or don't have to pay for university or college. Marxism, again, is the philosophical or theoretical ideas that founded capitalism. And Marxism is a system of political and economic thought developed by Com Karl Marx. He wrote the Communist Manifesto, and it emphasizes the idea that, especially as a result of industrialization and the abuse of the workforce, that a class struggle will ensue, and the lower class or the proletariat will rise up and overthrow the bourgeoisie. Uh, and so Marx's ideas are really about social change. Yes, they're economic, but in, in nature they are social. So all of history, Marx says, is the result of a class struggle between the bourgeoisie and the proletariat. And when he thinks of proletariat, the working class, he's not, Marx is not thinking of farmers, he's thinking of factory workers and, and laborers in industrialized or industrializing countries. Uh, and Marx believes in this revolution and that the revolution of the proletariat would establish a dictatorship of the proletariat. Karl Marx is often called the father of communism because, uh, as suggested, Lenin and others took Karl Marx's ideas and put them into practice in communist nations. So communism is a political philosophy that manifested from Karl Marx's ideas. Again, a violent revolution is needed to overthrow the capitalist society and create a society based on social equality. So one of our favorite memes is communism, it's a party, right? And you see our communist leaders at the party uh, and red is often the color of communism and you can see the hammer and the sickle, which is in the on the Russian and Soviet, well, the Soviet Union flag. Uh, and the star in the upper left-hand corner is on the Chinese Republic flag under Mao. Uh, and so it aims to overthrow the uh, social order, or, sorry, overthrow capitalism. Uh, I see that your notes have things that aren't on the slide, so I'll fill them in. Uh, complete communism would be an anarchy or a collective society with no government where decisions and policies are created for the greatest good of everyone. Everyone is equal. Um, so one government with equality among people and control by the people.
For capitalism, you don't have a space on your notes with blanks, but you can go ahead and flip your sheet over and take notes on capitalism on your own. Uh, so capitalism argues that competition between companies means that there are low prices and higher quality goods because consumers get to choose and that means that consumers are going to consider price and quality in when they look at goods and that is going to force companies to keep their prices low and have higher quality goods. Uh, in order to do this Adam Smith says that the government needs to be hands-off meaning there aren't a lot of government regulations restricting companies and making rules, and that is called laissez-faire economics. Laissez-faire is French for let it be, uh, but that is a term you might hear uh, or see on the AP exam. So the document that outlines these ideals of capitalism are, is called Wealth of Nations, uh, and it was written by Adam Smith. Some other ideas of wealth of nations are that uh, specialization of labor creates efficiency and so we should have division of labor uh, kind of the idea that why should you pay or why should you do a task if you can pay someone else to do it better and you focus on and become an expert in your career and then you use that money you earn in your career to pay other people to do their careers and help each other uh, capitalism believes in wage labors meaning jobs have different uh, wages and and values and people should be compensated based on the value of their job this means there's a flexible price structure for both goods but also wages uh, and voluntary of exchange of goods you buy something if you want it uh, if you can't afford it you choose not to buy it and it, it's all about choice and uh, government being hands-off and, and power being in the hands of the consumers uh, and so that is capitalism it should sound very familiar to the system we have in the United States for these scenarios you should read each scenario and go ahead and write in which type of system you think this is as kind of a quick check did you understand uh, how these systems are applied in real life We'll discuss which scenario this or which system this is in class. We'll move to the next one. I'm going to go to the next. Okay, go ahead and pause this slide if you're still working and have a nice night.